everyone, it's Chelsea from Hip Rock Tio Studio, and today I'm sharing with you a speed up voiceover version of the Art Joy of Sharing channel live stream show from 52120. So, the theme for the live stream show today was Paint Party, and basically, we could just do whatever we wanted as long as it included paint. So, I thought because lately gel printing has been making me happy and that's about the only thing I want to do. I would get out all my small gel plates, uh, circular ones, a triangle, square, rectangle, and um, a scale, mermaid scale type one. All of those, get them out and play with them. I started out with just a little bit of this shimmer paint from the, uh, what's it called? Um, EarthSafeFinishes.com. Um, this is the place that makes some paint that is VOC free. I wanted to see how it would work on the plate uh, exactly the same as acrylic paint. It's just shimmery acrylic paint basically. Uh, I had some of these plates that had a little bit of white paint with powdering on them that was, was uh, already dry. And so I just put the colors over the top of that and then printed and I came out with like white pattern on top of these shimmery prints. Uh, the gold doesn't show up very much because it's very translucent, but the pink and the purple are really nice. Uh, very shimmery, hard to see on the video, I know. Um, there's a picture coming up and maybe you'll be able to see the shimmeriness a little bit. I did my best to take a photograph of it. So that's the Ann Butler designed shimmery iridescent paints from um, EarthSafeFinishes.com. So then I'm just moving on. I have, still have, <clears throat> excuse me, some of this tissue paper that I had uh, kind of roughly cut into six by six pieces from a show we did. I don't know if it was last week or the week before about making collage component components. So I thought I would continue with that. I think the best thing to do with these little plates is to layer them in coordinating colors, one on top of another on top of another, um, you know, offsetting a little bit and adding just a whole bunch of pattern and layer uh, using stencils or whatever mark making tools you have to make a little bit of pattern into the paint and just stacking them over each other. And when you can fill up the whole paper with different uh, shapes and colors that coordinate with each other. It looks really cool. So that's probably my favorite use of them. And that's the reason that I started with that. Um, I used the scale shaped one, the circles, the triangle. A little bit of this did get cut off because, <laughs> well, I <laughs> dumped out that pink iridescent paint all over my floor and um, some got on my dog Nika and <laughs> anyway it had to be cleaned up so there's kind of a little break here but that's what the finished piece looks like it's tissue paper so it will be uh, collaged onto something else at some point but I just think that's cool looking the way that you can you can get a lot of color and texture stacked up it's different than putting the paint on a big gel plate and a stencil and then pulling the whole thing because you get so many layers of color and if you use some some opaque and some transparent paints it just it turns out really cool so that's probably my favorite thing to do so the next one I decided to try with my mini plates um, I've been seeing some interesting mandala paintings for quite a while now one person that I follow on Facebook uh, Robin Mead makes a lot of these very bright, colorful mandala paintings. And I think they're really cool. I cannot draw a circle to save my life. I can't, I can't draw a, a good shape without some sort of a, a template or something. But what if I used my acrylic paint pens, and I'm starting out with the Arteza ones, uh, on the round gel plate, and then I'm still getting that fun, free, um, hand-drawn look, but at least it's round <laughs> because the plate's round. And I thought that that might be kind of fun. So 
I'm using the different colors of paint pens, writing right onto the plate with them. And remember, this is acrylic paint that's in these pens, so it's fine. It works great with the plate. And then I'm, let, I'm working two at a time so that they can dry a little bit because I want to pick up the whole pattern all in one layer by putting a very thin coating and brayering it on of a white or some kind of a neutral paint. And this paint, given the opportunity, will adhere to that other acrylic paint that's in the markers and lift it off the plate all at once. It also fills in anything that you didn't get with the marker. So if you use a different color besides white, you'll end up with that color showing through as well. So I think that turned out really cool. Uh, one little section didn't come up um, off the plate for some reason. It's probably still too wet. And I don't know, it's, it's kind of grungy looking. I think that it will be fun to do pen work over the top of this page. And I filled up the entire page. This is a uh, eight and a half by 11 printer paper page, you know, just inexpensive printer paper. So I got out some Posca pens. Remember Posca, Posca pens are also acrylic paint in a marker. And I'm drawing over my gel plate again with some different colors. These are more of pastel colors. The tips on the Posca pins are different than the tips on the Arteza pins and I wanted to see um, the Posca pins have a more firm tip like a, I don't I don't know how to describe it, like a compressed sponge and then the Arteza ones they're more, the, the tip is more squishy and if you don't really um, prime the Arteza one, actually if you either one, if you don't prime them by pressing them down onto the paper before you start, you won't have quite enough paint and it gets a little bit streaky. So I was just trying out different pens. I, I got out a Posca set and my Arteza set of 20. I think this is a great use for the Arteza ones in particular because they have fat juicy tips. Worked really well um, on these tiny little round gel plates. So I'm just making interesting patterns, um, adding different colors. It's a lot of fun. This was actually really zen. Like I felt I could uh, do that for a long time, <laughs> that I could make these patterns on here. Now, as you can see, that one wasn't quite dry and I ended up with a little bit of smearing um, because the marker was not dry on the plate. So you do wanna give it a chance to dry. Um, I'm impatient. I don't like to wait for things and I'm usually well rewarded with my impatience because here in the in Arizona it dries very quickly but um, yeah I didn't wait quite quite long enough. Still looks cool though. Still came out fine so it just smeared a little bit when the paint went on. So then I decided to fill in with just some more pattern like ones so I lay stencils down and press the little round plate over the top of the stencil and then pick it up and I can I can get a positive and a negative by doing it that way, by you doing a second print if there's enough paint left on there. So I did that a few times. Uh, it would have taken me a long time to fill up this page uh, if I hadn't filled in with this quicker method of using the round mini plates. Then I thought, well, how fast can I fill up some color on one of these? And so I just decided to do kind of scribbles and dots to see what that would look like. And I could do that very quickly. So I could get a lot of different color and pattern on there very quickly if I wasn't carefully trying to draw something. So that worked out too. And that time I used um, some, instead of using white in the background, I used a colored paint so that I could see what that would look like having the colors on top of another color. So I used kind of like a peachy pink color um, over these two. I also just did some black scribbles, just straight up black scribbles, gestural scribbles to see how that would look. So this was a lot of fun. If, you, if you're just looking for something to do, this, this activity with some paint markers and a little bit of acrylic paint to pick it up with, and some small plates. You, I mean, you could do it on your large plate too. 
Actually, it might work great on your large plate because it would have time to dry as you were continuing to draw what you'd drawn previously would dry. So, yeah, a lot of fun. There's a little bit of staining on the plates. I know that I will be able to clean that off with some baby oil and a paper towel. It will not be a problem to clean that off. And as long as it's not coming up anymore, I don't really even care if it's there, to be honest. Um, gel plates are tools, and so they should be used as such. If you're not worried about your hammer being rusty, then you probably shouldn't worry about your gel plate being stained, in my opinion. So I will use that as a background on an art journal page or something sometime. It'll be fun to just put that on and, you know, play with it see what I can make over the top or else do a bunch of pen work. I'm not sure exactly what I'll do. So this is a piece of watercolor paper and it, before the show started I was messing around and I had an incident where too much white paint come, came out and so I used my brayer on all my plates and I put white paint on them and then I used um, then I wanted to make some pattern on it so I turned them over and I pressed them down onto this watercolor paper. And so it's white on white. White acrylic, which is like a plasticky rubbery surface, over the top of the watercolor paper. And then I'm using some watercolor pigments here. Um, I don't know which ones these are. There's, it's a collection and there's a lot of different ones, but I'm using a yellow, an orange, a red, and a pink. And going over the top of this paper, of course, if you're really going to do a watercolor, you should size your paper by uh, spraying it on both sides and then uh, taping it down to something firm because what you get here is, of course, a curl, which then makes your watercolor pigment pull up on the edges of your paper. But my intention for this is to cut it up anyway. I'm going to cut it up and make it into ATCs because next month, the month of June, in Art Joy of Sharing all month we're doing an ATC a day. I hope you guys will join us. There's no prompts, it's just an ATC a day and you share them and put them, put them in the Facebook group. So um, I hope you guys will join us in, in that. So I'm just continuing to layer some watercolor on here and it's hard to see until it dries, but the acrylic paint that's been put on there with my small plates with a pattern is resisting the watercolor. So now you can see it in the picture. It looks pretty cool. I'll cut those into two and a half by three and a half and make them into AT, that it, into an ATC background. Now this is another piece of watercolor paper that I was doing a different project on earlier and it just has random watercolor on it. It's got a, a kind of an orangey gold, some green and some what is called moon glow which is a a purple, a dark purple Daniel Smith color. It also has some salt sprinkled into it. It was wet and then it was allowed to dry. It's boring, people, it's boring. So I thought another good way to use your mini plates if you have something like this is to start adding pattern over the top of your watercolor and you're gonna get a different look than if it was acrylic paint because you've got that watery background. So I started with some uh, buff titanium paint. Remember my white's kind of uh, empty. So I'm using the titanium buff or buff titanium or titan buff or whatever whatever this brand one is called. And I went over with my square and added some pattern through stencils and then I'm doing the same thing picking up the green, the purple, and the orange colors of acrylic paint. Um, my plate was pretty grungy so I gave it a good clean with a baby wipe. So here's the orange. Uh, they're not exactly the same tones because my acrylic paint doesn't necessarily match my watercolor paint, but they're close and I can add pattern and color over the top. And where I've used the stencil, it's left it open so that you can still see the watercolor in the background. And this one will also be cut up and made into ATC backgrounds. So it's amazing when you make a whole piece of something and then you cut it into small pieces and you get so much interesting uh, different looks on all your small pieces. I am going to cut this one up and you will see what I mean. They all come out very different. 
that's why it's fun to make masterboard backgrounds for ATCs and uh, then cut them up because you've still got those same colors. You can make a similar pattern if you want to on the top, but you get such a different look. Like that one is very different from the others. And then, then I get some real like ones that have almost like a, a green moss on them. I don't know. It's interesting. <laughs> it's just interesting. So I'm cutting them all up. And I am going to actually finish one of them just real quick before the video is over. But if you guys are liking this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you... Turn on that notification bell, that little dingy ding thing that looks like a bell next to the bottom of the screen. That will uh, tell you when I have a new video come out. So that's always helpful. You can also share this on Pinterest or Facebook. All those things help my channel by other people being able to find me easier and uh, kind of getting your recommendation that I'm doing something that you like and maybe they will like it too if they're of similar mind. So I have a little scrap of the watercolor paper here that I'm stamping some black onto. And then I tore a little piece of tissue paper that had some black dots on it. Put that down. I'm going to glue uh, this one over the top. And I have kind of like a little area of interest going down the card. Um, I'm using that same black ink, which is a permanent ink around the edges, kind of uh, using it as a sponge around the edges. And then I'm looking for something to put on it. And on my desk, there was a sticker that said, leave a little sparkle wherever you go. Um, I don't think they mean to, to bring your glitter jar and sprinkle it everywhere. <laughs> but that would be kind of fun. Here I am at the grocery store sprinkling glitter on the floor. <laughs> Make everyone suffer the endless glitter mess. So I put that on there. Then I I had this uh, paper medallion that was gold. I cut it in half. I glued uh, some at the bottom, some at the top. It's it's you know shimmery, sparkly because it's a metallic paper, metallic painted paper. And then um, the show is over, but I continued to finish this. I got back out that watercolor that has the moon glow in it and I did my shading around the the focal images here with the moon glow. It's like a dark purple watercolor just to make that center section stand out a little bit more from the background. Um, then what did I do? I think I added a little bit of orange in it up at the top because there wasn't orange up at the top. And then I think I used a white pin, made sure it was dry. I used a white pin um, to kind of highlight the, the words again because they weren't showing up. I used it to splatter and I think that my ATC was done. So that is it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>